Hello, everybody. This is the One Point Perspective Railroad Scene. I want to go over what is required for this drawing. You're going to need a railroad. Um, that's track, ties, and rivets. At least four foam poles that are connected. At least four foliage. I usually do cacti for this drawing, but you can put trees, shrubs, any kind of foliage that you'd like to add. You're going to have one building and a fence. Now these can be on either side of the drawing and then of course adding your own details to this animals. Um, for today I'm going to actually draw a train on our tracks. Um, you can put mountains in the background, clouds, or make it your own. So without further ado, let's get started. So like I said earlier, I'm going to change this up to my normal pace. I'm going to, to add a train in this drawing. You don't have to do that, but um, it's up to you. I thought it would be something fun, something different. So you're going to start off with your horizon line um, about in the center of your page. And then this time I'm going to move that, that uh, vanishing point. It's not going to be in the center of my line. I'm actually going to kind of move it over to the right a little bit. And just like we do in the city drawing, you're going to start off with a V. This is where our train track is going to go. So I prefer a wider track, a little bit wider than what we did for uh, the drawing. And I want my train to come over to, towards the right a little bit more. So, or my track, I'm sorry, towards the right a little bit more. And we're going to have a bit of a wider track. So don't make this space too narrow, depending on uh, how large you want that track to be. So in between the spaces, that's where we're going to put our, our track for our train. I'm going to draw a train on my track. Um, you don't have to do this. This is something extra. Um, so if you don't want to, what you're, then you're going to continue the, the uh, track all the way towards the vanishing point. But anyway, I like to start off with a little bit of the, the track, the first track coming off of the page. So I'm going to start with a horizontal line in between those two receding lines. And that is my first track. Now sometimes I'll put a T to let myself know that that's the track. And then we're going to have a space in between those. So here and then sometimes I'll put an S very lightly because I'm going to erase it. So here's my first track. I'm going to make these a little bit larger. So here's my next one. T for track. And then this space. Remember, as things go back into space, I just realized the screen was off. Uh, as the things go back in space, this space is going to become smaller. So you just want it to become a little bit smaller. Make sure that ruler is staying nice and parallel. So there's that space. And then next track tie. Remember, as things go back in space, they're getting smaller. T for track. Next space. And this is where I will probably do one more track tie, S for space, T for track. Okay, so notice these track ties are getting smaller. This one's probably a little bit too small. I'm going to fix that. So I fixed that off camera, uh, but anyway, I'm going to stop mine there because I'm going to be putting a train right in this space on the track. If you don't want to do that, continue this process all the way back towards the vanishing point. So putting a space in, then a track, space, track, space, track. What you're going to do once you have that whole track laid out, or if you've gotten to this point, you're going to erase in between here where the space is. And by the way, this is where I put that first track tie I was talking about. I realized it was off my screen once I had started. Um, but I always start off with a piece of that track on the paper. <clears throat> so you're going to erase the sides in here. So on the side of each space, 
you're going to erase. And as I do that, I erase this. Remember, light, write those letters really, really lightly. It's just there to kind of help you remember. Um, if you're good enough and you can remember without doing that, kudos to you. Okay, so we have that on here, but we want them to look three-dimensional. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. So what we want to do with these is make them look three-dimensional. This first one, we don't need to work with anymore. We can get rid of that T. This second one, in front of it, you're going to draw straight down on each side. So you have these two vertical lines here, and then you're going to take your ruler and connect them with a horizontal. And what I also like to do once I've done that is shade them in a little bit. Quickly, I'll do that. And then, you know, once I'm done, I'll kind of go back in my drawing and fix things up a little bit. So I'll shade that a little bit better. But for right now, get rid of that T. Next one, vertical line down, vertical line down. Connect across. Watch your ruler, make sure it is staying parallel with that horizon line. Um, make sure that it's nice and straight because what you'll end up doing, if, if not, your track will start to lean and it'll look more like a roller coaster. Next one, and I've only had to do three on here because we're going to put that train on here. We'll probably have to draw a few more in there once we get that train positioned on here. Remember too, as things go back in space, they get smaller. So don't make these bigger and bigger and bigger. Get rid of these T's. Okay, let's start on our train. If you don't want to draw the train, you can go ahead and, and skip ahead to the correct part. But for our train, we're going to make it uh, come out like a V. So we're going to sketch a little bit. And sketching is good. You always can go back and fix things up. So you can make this come to a point or I'm going to kind of give it a rounded edge and go back off of this page. We want it to go past the railroad check just a bit. Okay. Now we're going to start to go straight up and we're going to make the top part of a box. You don't want to, I normally have you all erase everything, and we are going to do that. Um, we'll erase all this stuff. We want to keep that vanishing point right there. We need to know where that vanishing point is. So at this point, you would erase the horizon line and those receding lines that we drew for the track. But you want to keep that vanishing point. Do not get rid of your vanishing point right now. Okay. So we can always come back to this and, you know, really work on it. And that's probably what I'll do later. But we want to work on our trains. So we're going to put the window, the conductor's window. You can design it however you want. I like to follow and kind of keep an equal distance on both sides. Again, you can come back and darken things up later on. I realized once again I was at a screen. I need to watch my screen when I'm working. But anyway, you want to kind of keep an equal distance on the sides for your window. And then the next thing we're going to do is draw that big center circle. And you want to make this quite large. So I'm just kind of mapping out where I'd like to put that circle. And I kind of hover over it. And I keep making that circle until I'm satisfied. And that one looks pretty good. And I'm going to erase any extra stuff I don't need. And 
and then we're gonna make a smaller one and I kind of want this one to land on my vanishing point to make it easier to erase and hide later on maybe not doesn't look very even there we go that's a little bit better never mind all right so up here we're going to make the smokestacks. We're going to start off with a square. Get rid of all that extra stuff we don't need. As I've told you guys before, we have a lot of erasing. And then we're going to make almost like a upside down triangle to finish off our smokestack. Round that. We don't want pointy. We want to round it get rid of anything that would be behind it. Okay. Below the circle, we're going to just make a nice horizontal line. In this space, you can make some vertical lines. And go back and add more to them. Okay, so here what I'm going to do with this train is kind of narrow this down a bit. So I want to, let's work on this front part actually, the grill. We're going to have a nice thick line that goes right down the center. And then we're going to curve our lines out of here. And go back in and kind of thicken them up a little bit. It's a little bit off center. I probably would have liked it to be over here a little bit more. And what most trains are, these are really colored in. So I'm going to kind of darken them up a bit. And you can play around with this. We can add some some humps to this and some, some different decoration. You can always play with the shape a little bit more of your train. But for the most part, we've got our train on the track. So this is the part of the track I was talking about. We want to kind of extend those tracks back. We don't just want this empty space. So what we're going to do here is in between here, we would have a space. And then we're going to add one more track on here. And what we want to do is erase right up here. And even back here in the very back, at least on mine, and we're going to bring this line down over here too and connect them across. Shade that in. And there we go. So I paused the video and kind of played with my train a little bit more. And I just brought that box in and made a curve line right here. <coughs> and then uh, you know, darkened some areas and just kind of played with that. I also brought it in over here on the sides so you can manipulate these trains and make them your own. What we're going to do now is add the rivets, which are the little bolts that kind of hold our track down. I'm going to move this up here so that we can see. 
Remember right here is my vanishing point. So I'm going to line this ruler up with that vanishing point. And we're just drawing the little rivets like the screws that hold the track in. So I'm lining this up. I want to have a bit of my uh, track hanging off. This is kind of like when we did the sidewalk a little bit. And inside that rivet, I'm sorry, inside that track, we're going to draw little rivets, just two, along your ruler. Two little dots along your ruler. That last one, I'm probably just going to put one on there because it's off the page. And I'm going to match this up on the other side. It's storming outside. All right, so here we go, lining it up with that vanishing point. I've got about the same distance, and I'm just going to draw two little dots along that ruler where it's inside the tracks, like so. The last thing that we're going to add to our uh, railroad is the, the track itself, what your uh, train is sitting upon. So using that vanishing point a little bit past the rivet, so we're going to give a little bit more space in here, and then with your pencil where the track is. So if you have no track or if you have no train, you're going to start from that vanishing point and drag out. Uh, but if you have a train on here, you're going to start where uh, you start to see the, the railroad track. I'm sorry, the railroad ties. And then you're going to draw another one. You want to pivot this out a little bit so you want a good space down here at the front. You can see I've put a little bit of pressure in this because this is really where I'm going to shade this in nice and dark. Matching this on the other side, so you want about the same amount of distance. Line up that ruler with the vanishing point. Watch for where your rivets are. Give it a nice space. Pivot that ruler. Come in here, shade in that area. I'm going to make that a little bit bigger. You could see I was debating it in my video. Just wanted it to be a little bit thicker. Okay, and that does it for the railroad track. So we've got the track ties and the rivets. Now I also have that you need to have a phone poles. We need four phone poles that are connected, um, a building, a fence, some foliage. So I'm going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to start off with the building. So I'm going to put mine on the left hand side because I've got, I remember I, I moved that um, vanishing point more towards the right hand side so that gave me a lot of space over here on the left and that's because I'm going to put a station there. So I'm going to start off, this is one point perspective, you're just drawing a box. You can have this come off your page, but I really want to showcase this. Um, so I want this to take up a lot of that foreground. So I'm going to make a pretty good size one. Drawing my box first, but I'm going to do something a little bit different. Drawing up the sides. Okay, as for my top, when I connect these across, I'm going to draw this really lightly. Super light because I'm actually going to erase it. Now you don't have to be this extra, um, but I'm going to show you guys something different. So we want to find the center of this box. 
And this is something you'll see again when we work with two-point perspective. So I'm going to guess where that center is. So in order to do that, I'm going to connect the left hand, the bottom left hand side with the top right hand side. And I'm just going to draw real lightly in the middle of that ruler where I think that middle might be. You can barely see it. And I'm going to do that on the, this side now. So the top left, the bottom right. And where these lines cross, that's the exact middle. So you're going to take your ruler from that middle point and line it up directly in the middle of that. Again, this is something you will see when we do the two-point perspective house. And what you're going to do is decide where you want the peak of this building. So I'm going to say it's right about here. So I'm going to make a little dot. And now, where that dot is, from the dot to the left-hand side of this building, I'm going to draw a line. And then from the dot to the right-hand side of this building, I'm going to draw a line. We're making a roof in one-point perspective. Again, you'll see this when we do the house, when we work in two-point perspective. It's a little bit different. Okay. So now I'm going to get rid of all this extra stuff, even that, that middle line right there, or that top line right there, and then my horizon line. And we're now going to draw the part that goes away from us, so towards that vanishing point. So bottom right-hand side, lining it up with the vanishing point, I'm going to draw towards it. From here, towards that vanishing point, I'm going to draw towards it. And then connecting them down. Make sure it's nice and straight. Extra stuff, get rid of it. To make the rooftop, well, first we're going to go from the very top of this towards that vanishing point. And then to finish this off, this is just like when we are making um, the boxes. And actually, an, another art teacher said, like sides look the same. So the sides are all going to look the same. So in order to do that, we want to put that ruler in that same position as it is on the front, and then slide that ruler so that you reach the end of the house and the end of the building and connect up. And it keeps that same position. So again, you take your ruler, line it up with that front line, and then slide it over in that same position until it reaches the end of the house and draw your line. Get rid of any of that extra stuff. We don't need that horizon line, that extra little line. We're going to keep that building the way it is right now and just kind of step away from it and work on the um, foam poles. So I'm going to have the foam poles run behind this building. So we're going to have receding lines coming out of that vanishing point. And we want those foam poles. So we're going to use the bottom. So we're going to use that vanishing point. And in between the spaces, between our train if you don't have a train, you have a lot more space than what the rest of us do. And we're skipping over the building. We're drawing this down. So this is going to be the bottom of the foam poles. And then above them, we're going to put where the top of the foam poles go. So I'm going to say about here is a good height. So making another receding line. So lining up with that vanishing point, point, drawing lightly, guys, because we're going to do a lot of erasing with this one. Okay, so you can see here's the bottom of our foam pole line, and this is the very top. You're going to draw four vertical lines in between this space. We have all kinds of space. Now over here where our building is, if you put your building right here, then um, you won't be seeing the bottoms of these foam poles, just the top part. So space these out. Give yourself space between these foam poles. Don't stack them all together. Uh, the closer they are, the the harder it's going to be for you. So the way I like to do it is I'm going to draw my first vertical line up in between those spaces. 
And then I'm going to draw my last one so that I know I want to put four here total. And I've got that building in the way so I can't make it to the bottom. So now I have all this space to draw two more in here. So even it out, make it easier on yourself. So here's going to be where I put one of them and the other one I'll put right here. And that gives me a good equal distance. I actually could move this one, one down and I'll probably do that. Move it over here. There, it's a little bit better. Okay. So once you have them now, you've got to make them have a little bit of a, of a width to them. Um, they, need, they need a little bit of a width. So remember, as things go away from you towards that vanishing point, they're going to become smaller. So if you want to work from the smallest one, you just want a little bit of a space in here so we can see. So my next one needs to be a little bit thicker than that. Next one needs to be a little bit thicker than that. And finally, my last one needs to be the thickest of them all. There's a lot of lines going on here. I'm going to erase the top part of this. I'm going to erase any parts of the horizon line that goes through my foam pools. Uh, and I'm even going to erase the bottom part of that receding line. So go ahead and let's do that. I went ahead and actually sharpened my pencil as well. It was getting kind of dull. Remember, keep a sharp pencil. So what we're going to do now is round these. Um, so I know that they came up to kind of an angle here, but we just want them to round so it doesn't have to be perfect. We're going to round those edges. So sometimes you might have to erase a little bit you want to round them. So what I say is I'm making a, um, a sad face in between. I'm connecting them with a frown face. I'm rounding them. And at the bottom, you're going to make a smiley face. I only have one that shows the bottom. So here I am back here. I'm going to make a little rounded smiley face and we can't see the rest. So let's make the T of our foam pole. The first one is different than the rest. So the first one, you just draw wherever you'd like to put that, that T on your foam pole. So again, you're going to make a nice horizontal line to make the T of your foam pole. And that side's a little bit longer. Fix that. And I'm going to make the same thickness. So you want the same thickness that's here to be here. So line that up, draw that bottom part of your T, and then round the edges. So you're making kind of those. There you go. And in between this space, it's up to you, but you can get rid of it, and I like to get rid of it. So it almost looks like a cross. And then I'll fix those little parts. To make the rest of the T's, you have to base it off of this first T. So you line that T up with your vanishing point. Now, wherever you choose to line it up, whether it's from the top line or the bottom line, whatever one you choose, uh, every T after that has to hit at that same spot. For instance, if you use this top part of this T and make a, a receding line towards that vanishing point, every single one of these has to have its T meet that line at the top. And that's where I like to position mine, so I use the top. And I draw so lightly because we're going to be actually erasing this line. So just draw towards it with a light, light, light T. You can barely see it on there. So this means now every time I make a T, that top line has to stop at that line. So there it is, and then I'm going to make that same thickness. So actually my building is hiding part of that one. And I'm going to round this, and over here, round it. I get rid of that extra stuff I don't need in the middle. And 
Next one. Top part of that T ends on that line. Again, my building's in the way. This is different than other videos I've done. Normally, I uh, do the, the foam poles first. I thought this would be more interesting, and it shows how to overlap things. All right, and this last one again. Top part of that T lines up with that line. Try to keep them at the same thickness. And if you have one that goes really far back there, you can almost do it where it's it's just a thick line uh, and it's almost all shaded in. So let's get rid of this line that we were using. All right, and it's time to connect these. So what you want to do is you want to connect them in the same point. Now my building is covering up a lot of this. So on the left hand side, I'm going to start with the left. What you're going to do is draw a line down, skip over the foam pole, and you want to end at the same spot. So sometimes I sketch it out or work the other way. From here, drawing my line, skip over the foam pole, back. So this would be connecting here. Then from here, we would draw all the way down and connect up here. Lucky for us, that building is in the way. And this last one, we're going to connect over here. So we're going to draw, skip over, and connect. Quite easy because we've got that building in the way. Now, the other side, we're going to draw and it would connect here. So draw, skip over the building, bring your line up here. Draw, skip over the building. Right here, it goes in front. Right here, and the last one, we're going to connect here. And then, because we don't have another foam pole, we want to make this look right. We're going to draw down, skip over, like we're going to the next one. Okay. So we got really lucky by putting that building here. Now, if your foam poles were above that building, you would see a lot more of that connection. But we were able to connect those foam poles. You can go back in, uh, darken them if you want to shade them in. But you've got them on your paper. So we're going to go to the other side now. Because it's blank. And we're going to make our foliage. Now, I'm making this scene more of a desert scene. I'm going to put uh, cacti in this, but you are more than welcome to do any kind of foliage if you want to do trees, uh, anything like that. But what you want to do is line up with that vanishing point, just like we did for the foam poles. We're going to make a bottom receding line, so line up with the vanishing point. Decide where you want those trees to go. Again, I'm skipping over my train. There's the bottom of it. And now for the foliage, because I'm doing a cacti, they don't need to be super tall. So I'm going to make their top receding line just past the horizon. Okay. I like to draw four vertical lines where I want to place my foliage, similar to what I did when I worked on the foam poles. So my first one's going to be very close to the foreground. Lightly, lightly, lightly. There's my first one. I'm going to make my last one back here, almost hidden from the train. And in between these two spaces, add my second and third. Okay, so I use these lines as help. You don't necessarily have to put them there, but I like them there. It also helps me make sure that my foliage is nice and, and vertical. So in between the space, you're going to kind of free draw um, your, your foliage. I'm doing cacti, 
So I, I start with, with the trunk of the cacti, and it changes every time. They don't have to look the same. You can have all of them looking the same, but what I like about a cactus is that it's random. So I'm going to use this as my line. I start at the bottom. I'm going to round that bottom, and I'm using that line as kind of a... Um, making it symmetrical. So I want to use that where I keep it right in the middle, making my vertical line up. And at some point I'm going to make the arm of a trunk. So I'm going to curve out, draw up a little bit, round that edge, go back. And these don't have to be perfect. That's why I choose um, the cactus because you can, I mean, they're really weird if you ever had one, they just randomly grow. We want that top line to be our stopping point. You don't want any of your cacti to go past that. Round that. And then you can bring it straight down, or you can add another arm if you want. You can have as many arms as you want. I like to kind of keep them asymmetrical, so I might add a little tiny one right down here. Round it out and bring it back down towards that bottom. get rid of that horizon line. And now I'm actually not going to get rid of that vertical line. I'm going to make it part. So with a cacti, you're going to pivot out of that top part. Like a, you know, going towards the left hand side. And the cool thing about this is these lines, you want to make them a little bit wavy. So I'm going to go back over top of that, but I'm going to make it wavy this time. I'm going to pivot again. So I'm rounding and make those lines wavy. Here we go from these top parts right to the right, follow that line. Here's one, kind of go in the middle, and this one's going to curve towards the left. Fill those spaces. So curve to the right a little bit, make one that goes down in the middle, curve to the left. And then what we do on here is just add X's randomly. You can even add little spikes that come out the, the exterior the perimeter of your cacti, but you're just making little X's. Put them all over this thing. So repeat this process uh, going down. And remember, again, as things go away from you, they become smaller and smaller and smaller, so they don't, they're not this thick. Um, and there's different ones you can do. I like this, this shape. I'm going to repeat it again. So I like to kind of keep that uniformity uh, throughout this drawing. So again, I'm going to round that bottom. Vertical line up a little bit. And now I like to change things up. Uh, so this time I'm going to make this hole a straight edge. Round that top part because we don't want to go past that line. And then we're going to make just one little arm on here. Remember, this one's much smaller, it's thinner than that last one. And then we're going to get rid of that horizon line. And I'm going to keep that vertical line I made. I'm just going to kind of go back over it, but move it around a little bit, thicken it, change it, rotate out from that top part. These don't have to be perfect. From here, curve to the right, go down the middle curve to the left, and then make X's. I'm going to pause this video and draw the other two after this one, just to save us some time. Sometimes when I make these videos too long, it takes a very long time for me to upload them. So we're just going randomly, do some on the perimeter. All right. And I'm going to go ahead and work on the rest of them. All right, so I've skipped ahead a little bit. And you'll see that I got rid of that receding line that was on the bottom of my um, cacti. Also on the top part of that, I got rid of all that lines. Kind of cleaned it up a little bit. And we're going to add our fence. So I'm going to add that behind this, this foliage. 
So again, we're making a bottom receding line and a top receding line, but we have to pay attention to where our cacti are. So where they are, you're gonna skip over it. So we've got this whole train here. I'm gonna draw in between, and this is the, lost my spot. This is the bottom of our fence. We don't want them to go up past our cacti. So here's the top part of our fence. Just watch out for where things are. Skip over. Okay. So right now we've got this nice receding line in between here. And we're going to make our little barbed wire fence. So in between these spaces, I'm going to randomly put some posts. I like to even them out. So here's one. I'm going to put one right behind this part of this cactus. I'm making them thicker. Vertical lines. Keep about an equal distance. We'd have one right here. We'll have one right past this cacti. Okay. Maybe I'll put one right here on that line. All right. In between our posts, we are going to add um, lines. We're just going to make like a little barbed wire fence. So lining it up with that vanishing point and drawing in between our posts. It's kind of hard. you got to pay attention to where you're going. All right, we're gonna draw another one kind of closer to it, not too far off from it. Make sure we got that vanishing point. Keep an eye out for your cacti and where those posts are. This is needing your full attention. And we're gonna do about one more. And you can keep that bottom line if you want to on yours, and you can keep the top line on yours. For mine, I'm gonna get rid of it because I want this to be like a barbed wire fence. I'm gonna do one more. Having to look before I draw, really look, make sure that there isn't, I'm not drawing through a part of my cactus. All right, and what I'm going to do is get rid of that bottom receding line and that top receding line. I think it would look better on mine. So I went through and thickened those up a little bit. I can see that the, it's glaring a little bit. I thickened those up and then I got rid of that top and that bottom line. And what I'm going to do is to make this look like barbed wire is just add those little X's that we did, just like we did for the cactus. And it kind of gives it that texture. It makes it look like a barbed wire fence. Your fence can be any way you want. You could have done all vertical posts in between those spaces. Um, I just think that this adds a little bit more to it. And I thicken those lines up a bit. Okay, so we've got all the elements. I'm going to go back to our station, and I'm going to just kind of add some more to this. So for mine, I want to add um, a porch area, I guess you'd call it, um, you know, so you don't have to do that on yours. You can simply leave yours like this, put a nice door on the front, and that's what I'm going to do right now. I'll do that. Um, but if you want to add some extra details to your station, uh, I'll help you with that here shortly. So we're going to put a door on the front. Remember, we don't want it too high up. This is about good right about here. We are on the side of the building that's facing us. I don't know if you guys can hear my cat's below me. He's needy. He's down here meowing. All right, so we've got our door. And then I'm going to add some writing. I like to write on the fronts of the building so you don't have to use that vanishing point. Uh, it can be quite tricky. So I'm going to write station up here. So station, it's a seven letter word. So our middle letter is the T, if I'm not mistaken. 
So you want to make that T right about there. All right. T I O N. A S, just kind of spacing this out. So station, we've got that on there. And you could add another door out here if you wanted to, or put some windows on this. But for me, I'm going to make like a little porch. So I want to work my way inward. So down here at the bottom right hand side, I'm going to draw back towards that building. And we're going to draw up. Straight up, vertical line. Now, from the back part of this, we are going to use our vanishing point. So lining up our vanishing point with the back part of that, that bottom line. Bring it back towards the building. And we've got our little deck, and this would actually come out to this way if we wanted to, if we want to make this part open. But I'm going to leave it the way it is. Um, and then what we could do here is add a little door on the inside here. So we just draw lines up. And then connect them with the vanishing point. door could probably be a little bit taller. Uh, I'm going to add a little rail. Yeah, the door probably needs to be a lot taller. Much better. And here we can just, in between the space, draw some posts if we want to. And if we want to do that floorboard, we want to just keep a nice um, horizontal line in here. So we can add a little bit of a wooden floorboard. It's kind of like when we did the sidewalk. You can always add more in there if you want to. You can add some windows, uh, whatever you, details you want to add. If you want to do some, um, like a, a rooftop, I like to keep that same angle. And so we're just going to draw some, oops, my ruler moved, some lines keeping that same angle. Gives a little bit of texture in there. You could put siding on your station, or you can just kind of leave it as is. I'm going to play around a little bit, add some windows on here. As you can see, I put a little bit of windows in there and kind of added a little bit more into my um, wooden floor. I'm going to add a little path out of this doorway. So in order to do that, uh, we're going to use that vanishing point. So line that corner of that door up with your vanishing point. Draw out from there. Go to the other side. Add another receding line using that vanishing point. And you can leave it just like that if you want to. Or you can actually make it look a little bit more realistic by kind of waving that line. So still following it. Waving it a little bit so it kind of has a more natural you know, look to it. It doesn't look like it was so man-made. Just kind of waving it just a bit so it doesn't have that nice, perfect straight line. You can add all kinds of stuff. If you want to put another window up here, we could do something like that. Remember, you're drawing on the part that's facing you, the viewer, uh, so you don't need to use that vanishing point. Maybe you can make this like a, a map or something or add some more details to it. I'm just going to make it a simple window. Like 
just like it's a blind. Okay. So we've got almost all the elements that we needed on here. All it is now is uh, background, adding some background to this. So this is going to be my uh, desert scene, and I like to put some mountains in there. Um, I also like to add a little smokestack on my train, put some clouds in the sky. So let's do that. So the first thing that I'm going to do is add a bit of a smokestack out of here. So all I'm doing is just, it's kind of like my clouds. I'm just making random lines. They're not connected. Uh, and I'm making this go all the way off my page. I'm going to kind of billow this out. And then if I want to, I can kind of add some more lines in there or really darken this if you want to with your smokestack. And I would suggest shading that in a little bit and kind of thickening those areas, really playing with it. Let's go back over top of them. And I'm looking really scratchy. I'm not necessarily making this all perfect. So don't be afraid to just make some random lines on there. And then you can kind of shade this in. I'll do it kind of quickly on here. All right, let's add some mountains. So off of this horizontal line, we're just going to put some mountains up here. And some of them are going to be taller. They're going to come down. They're going to overlap. Again, I'm doing about the same thing with um, the, my line. It's not nice and perfect. And, I, you know, we're out here in the desert, so I made this kind of uh, more vertical mountain range and then skip over my train and watch out for my I skip over my station and just have a little bit of fun with some of this okay and lastly let's add some clouds Remember, things that are closer to the top of the page are going to become much larger. Things that are going closer to that vanishing point are going to become smaller and smaller and smaller. Some of you might choose to do a sunset. Actually, we'll, we can do a sunrise. How about that? Or sunset, you decide. Just gonna put some clouds in there. Come over here, add a few more. You'll notice my clouds kind of have a straight line at the bottom and they zigzag up a little bit or wave up a little bit. Some of them are much larger because they're closer to the top of the page. Okay, so if you want to do a sunrise or sunset, I'm going to say it's coming off from right here. It can come out of your vanishing point, so if you're one of those people that didn't do the train, you can use that vanishing point, but we've got that vanishing point over here, so we're going to say right about here is where our sun is, and it's not gigantic. So we have our sun right in here, and we want to have some sun rays coming off of here. So we want to pivot out of this space. So where our sun is, we're just going to make some little lines. Here comes another one. We're pivoting out of that space. Here comes another one. These are just sun rays from the morning, or maybe it's becoming nightfall. And lastly, I'm going to show you how to do some really tiny birds. Uh, so for this, I'm going to zoom in, but um, they're really small. So to add little birds in here, you can stick with those, you know, letter M's that you did. But remember, these are really small, uh, so you can put little M's in here if you want to. And I do that a lot, especially when I'm getting more towards that vanishing point. They're little tiny black pecks. Um, little tiny M's. But another one that you can do is you make a little circle, just a little dot, and then you make a V out of each side. So instead of making that M, you're putting a circle in the middle and then putting a V on each side or upside down V. 
but this was just one way that you can add some birds to this drawing, add some texture in that sky, you know how I like to do that. And then you're going to add your own little details. You can put animals in, in the foreground, uh, you can put barrels, maybe at your station, um, sometimes you do a little tumbleweed. You can also add um, some little cacti in the background. But um, again, once you get all these things done, uh, you need a railroad with track ties and rivets, um, foam poles, at least four of them with connections uh, for foliage, cacti, trees, shrubs. You need one building, a fence, and then adding your own details to your composition. So here we are. Here's the final piece. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the drawing and um, talk to you later.